How's it going, guys? Peep it. What the hell wrong with it, fish, bro? Has anybody seen my son Nemo? Ugh, fish, bro. Straight rule my whole appetite. Here, as always, we have traditions, so, uh, before we get into this video, I will be right back. Man, I'm built like a recruit, bro. What the? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Peep a sub goal here. We have another sub goal. Let's see what you guys are making me eat today. Eat a single ibuprofen, but you have to chew it without water. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, there we go. That, that's the sub goal. <laughs> that wasn't very interesting, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, we're done here. If we hit 77,000 subscribers by the end of this week, I'll eat the most liked comment again and say something a little more interesting than a single ibuprofen, alright? Uh, that's all I asked for. That's my request. Alright, see y'all. Boom. Now, it's not like every day I talk about video games, right? I talk about it like once in a while. I think last time I talked about like Pokemon Go and that was like a month or two ago. But I do just want to talk about a pet peeve that really influenced this video. And that is video games taking themselves way too seriously. I think modern day video games just take themselves way too seriously. And it's to the point where it's like, you know, you can't really pick up a game anymore without it being overly competitive. Which is exactly why... Like, 90% of the time, you're gonna see me playing a game like Garden Warfare or Battlefront 2 in the background. Because these games came out during an era of games being designed for the sole purpose of just being fun. Now, this point could be, like, overly nitpicked, I will admit to that. I'm not expecting you guys to side with me, and I'm pretty sure the comment section is just gonna be like, Oh, you know, you could still play casual in Rainbow Six Siege. You could still play casual in Valorant. Like, you're not forced to play competitively. Which, I get that. I 100% get that. And, like I said, this is gonna be... A a very nitpicked point but it's like i think the concept of just constantly nerfing characters just because a pro player did not like this character in competitive play this character's picked 0.01 percent a little too much which is exactly why oh we're taking away this entire ability like i don't know it gets annoying for me very quickly a lot of games do this the majority of games do this and today i want to talk about rainbow six siege which is a game that i've played a lot back then it's a game that i have well over 1000 hours on i remember my friends got me into it circa 2018 right around when grim sky came out and i just got hooked to it to this day but as time went on as fun as the game was ubisoft kept making very questionable balance decisions like taking away entire guns from characters making this ability completely unusable and garbage it was to a point where over time they just stopped giving us the updates that we were used to like for fuck's sake we used to get a whole ass map and two characters every season now all we get is a new character and a battle pass of course a battle pass why wouldn't there be if we're lucky if the stars align when pigs finally start flying that's when we get a map like anyways that was more of a personal event i think it's like a written fact that every siege player just complains about the game all the time because i want to talk about the next update for rainbow six siege that in my opinion, I feel like might make or break the community. And this is someone who's been playing Rainbow Six ever since Operation Grim Sky. Because in the next update, they're getting rid of Recruit. Probably one of the biggest, like, inside jokes in Rainbow Six Siege. They're just removing him. Which is exactly why the reveal trailer got bombarded with dislikes. For those that don't know anything about Siege, this is Recruit. And... He's just sort of there. Yeah, he doesn't really serve a purpose in the game other than him just being there. He solely exists for new players who don't have any characters yet. While every character has a unique role in the game, like, like Mute is designed to jam devices coming from outside the building. Montaigne is like this French guy who has like a huge shield and his sole purpose is to be like a meat shield and take super risky entries for the team. Recruit is... He, yeah, he, he's just there. Like, he doesn't do anything other than have a gun and can throw a grenade. Like, what made Recruit so unique in the game is that he's the only character that you can actually stack. Everyone on your team can run Recruit, which created some hilarious-ass combos and strategies. And going back to my vent from a couple of minutes ago, games just can't be fun anymore. So they just removed one of the funnest things you could do with friends casually. So you might be wondering now, so if I'm a new player, wh what can I do now? 
now that I can't run the only free character in the game. Don't worry, Ubisoft has your back. You can run as Sentry or Striker. So what makes Striker and Sentry unique from Recruit? Well, I'm glad you asked. First off, they don't look like Recruit. They look very different. And number two, not, not much. Oh, and only one person can run the free character now. You can't five stack as the free character. Yet, yeah, nothing else really changed. The guns are slightly different and he has a wider range of utility, but that's really it. Rainbow Six Siege decided to just ruin a fun aspect of the game. And this is sort of the main reason why this got so much backlash. Because for the longest time, Ubisoft has been teasing the fact that they are going to rework Recruit to make him competitively viable, and you can run him in competitive. Now, there are so many things you could have done with a Recruit rework. Like, oh, maybe he has access to the hundreds of different guns that are in the game. Maybe give him access to all of them. Maybe give him, like, a unique feature that only he can have. Like, when you label something as a rework, and all you do is change the in-game model and make it so only one of you can play recruit now like you set such a high standard and did as little effort as possible not to mention that the in-game player models are copy and pasted from another game like th these aren't even original designs either like they are literally from a mobile game and this is what the entire season is yeah some slight nerfs some slight buffs but it's like no new characters no no crazy things yeah there's a new map but it's a recycled map from four years ago being put back into the map pool like this actually has to be one of the laziest seasons rainbow six siege has, has ever done like i don't know it's just so annoying i hate when games do this like i said it's so hard to find a game that just prioritizes having a fun time anymore it's just whatever's competitively viable that's literally all companies do nowadays people are constantly begging to bring back the old map because for those that don't know siege is supposed to be an evolving game so if you stop playing rainbow for like two to three years and decide to come back to it it's going to be a completely different game but there are so many holy grail of maps that we lost in the process including house 1.0 bro house 1.0 is like oh my god it was actually one of the funnest maps in the game and they got rid of it completely oh because it's it's too small for the current meta who gives a shit bro that map is fun you're obviously going to hear a lot of people complaining about old hereford a lot of people say old hereford was just an amazing map like i said i started in grim sky so i didn't get to experience old hereford some people will go as far to say that this was like peak rainbow six but guess what they removed it for some fucking reason now real quick before we stop today's video i do want to talk about one last thing and it is the fact that there's a rainbow six siege subscription service bro of course there is why wouldn't there be <laughs> God, I love subscription services. How much is this? Go ahead and tell me. Uh, they don't really say how much it is, but... Well, that, that's amazing to know. I, I love everything needing to be a subscription service for some reason. I will vent about this again. Like, not everything needs to be a subscription service. Do you guys... When will you guys realize this? Like, I will talk about this again. Jewel Osco, right? It's a huge grocery chain in Illinois. Why do they have a subscription service, bro? I just came here to get groceries, bro. I just came here to get a bag of doritos dog i don't need a subscription service for that like and the benefits were so mid it's just like ten dollars off every uber eats order you do oh your rewards points don't expire like i don't give a shit like anyways what do you guys think about this i decided to do a bit of an off-topic video today uh yeah see you uh